I've seen a, an interesting shift in uh, there. There seem to be more Republicans now willing to take that position and say, hey, uh, yeah, let's have a realistic view. Let's exercise restraint. Let's pursue diplomacy. Let's not go and and launch these wars that take many different forms, but ultimately undermine both our national and economic interests in this country. Whereas on the opposite side, voices that we would expect from the Democratic Party to be those voices for peace, to be those voices for diplomacy, as we've seen very recently, uh, are, are, they're, they're non-existent. And when this group of the, the so-called Progressive Caucus stood up and said, hey, President Biden, pursue diplomacy to bring about an end to the war in Ukraine because of the cost, the devastating cost of the people of Ukraine, but also to the American people, it wasn't even 24 hours before they quickly retracted the letter and you know did a 180, where literally, I think it was the chair of the committee saying, no, don't exercise diplomacy. What, what, why, how is it that the Democrats have gotten so far out of touch with where the majority of Americans are? The oddest thing to me about that whole brouhaha regarding that letter was that it advocated in a very gentle way that while Extremely. we're making war, couldn't we also think about the possibility of maybe diplomacy sometime? So yeah. that was immediately crushed by the Democratic leadership. And then it was only a few days later that President Biden himself announced that that was his policy. Right. So uh, even the uh, hint that you're getting a little bit ahead of the party boss is, is considered uh, totally unacceptable. Um, now, you're absolutely right in pointing out this phenomenon about the Republicans versus the Democrats, which I think is relatively new. I, I was really surprised, and, and I don't think of myself as a person who gets that easily surprised by what happens in Washington, <laughs> When I saw the vote on the $40 billion for Ukraine that was cooked up in a matter of days. So I know the Democrats have always been a party of war. And the Republicans have too. Mm -hmm. But what I didn't expect was that in this vote, every single Democrat in the Senate and every single Democrat in the House all voted for the aid to Ukraine. Yeah. Not a single dissenting voice. So that can't just have been everybody's individual calculation. There has to have been word passed that we absolutely have to be united on this. So there were only 57 members of the House and 11 members of the Senate who voted against that aid package. And every mm -hmm. single one was a Republican. Mm -hmm. Now, later on, I read an article in the Washington Post saying that uh, you don't have to panic uh, actually, the leaders of the Republican Party in the Congress are still very interested in war, and the anti-war caucus is just a minority. Well, I thought, okay, that's, it's too bad that it's only a minority, but at least there is such a caucus. Exactly. You wouldn't be able to write that about the Democrats because they are totally unanimous. And uh, actually, it takes me on to a larger speculation. Sometimes I think that uh, the idea of a restrained, modest foreign policy doesn't fit with the progressive ideal. It's liberal utopianism that teaches us we're working towards a perfect world. If we just keep knocking off the bad government, soon there'll be no more warlords, science will advance, there'll be no more diseases, we're heading towards a better and better world, we just have to whack down the people that stand in our way. Conservatives don't think like that. Conservatives mm. feel that all people in all countries are going to have their own interests forever, and these interests are going to clash, and that's what diplomacy is for. So forget the fantasy that you're going to remake the world in your own image. It's not good for the world, and it's not good for us. That's essentially a conservative idea. Now, many Republicans have drifted away from that also, but when you look back in history at people like Robert Taft, who used to be called Mr. Republican, Back in the late 40s and early 50s, he was opposing the creation of NATO because he said it's just going to set half the world against the other half. Uh, so Which is true. this is, an, this is a, a strain that runs deep in America. The idea of a modest, restrained foreign policy in which, as John Quincy Adams so memorably said, America goes not abroad in search of monsters to destroy is very deep in our heritage. It's not something that's just been made up. Those of us who favored are only trying to reclaim a very important strain in American history.